Linux kernel is a free and open source, monolithic, modular, multitasking, Unix-like operating system kernel. It was conceived and created in 1991 by Linus Torvalds for his i386 base PC, and it was soon adopted as the kernel for the GNU operating system, which was created as a free replacement for Unix. Since then, it has spawned a large number of operating system distributions, commonly also called Linux. Linux is deployed on a wide variety of computing systems, such as embedded devices, mobile devices, personal computers, servers, mainframes, and supercomputers. It can be tailored for specific architectures and for several usage scenarios using a family of simple commands, privileged users can also fine-tune kernel parameters at runtime. Day-to-day -day development discussions take place on the Linux kernel mailing list. Changes are tracked using the version control system Git, which was created by Torvalds as a bespoke replacement for BitKeeper. In April 1991, Linus Torvalds, at the time a 21-year-old computer science student at the University of Helsinki, Finland, started working on some simple ideas for an operating system. He started with a task switcher in Intel 80386 assembly language and a terminal driver. On September 17, 1991, Torvalds prepared version 0.01 of Linux and put it on the server of the Finnish University and Research Network. It was not even executable since its code still needed Minix for compilation and play. On October 5, 1991, Torvalds announced the first official version of Linux, version 0.02. At this point, Linux was able to run Bash, GCC and some other GNU utilities. After that, many people contributed code to the project, including some developers from the Minix community. At the time, the GNU project had created many of the components required for a free operating system, but its own kernel, GNU Herd, was incomplete and unavailable. The Berkeley software distribution had not yet freed itself from legal encumbrances. Despite the limited functionality of the early versions, Linux rapidly gained developers and users. Torvalds assigned version 0 to the kernel to indicate that it was mainly for testing and not intended for productive use. Version 0.11, released in December 1991, was the first self-hosted Linux, for it could be compiled by a computer running the same kernel. When Torvalds released version 0.12 in February 1992, he adopted the GNU General Public License version 2 over his previous self-drafted license, which had not permitted commercial redistribution. In contrast to Unix, all source files of Linux are freely available, including device drivers. The initial success of Linux was driven by programmers and testers across the world. With the support of the POSIX APIs, through the lib that, whether needed, acts as an entry point to the kernel address space. Linux could run software and applications that had been developed for Unix. The Linux kernel supports various hardware architectures, providing a common platform for software, including proprietary software. On January 19, 1992, the first post to the new newsgroup Alt.Oz.Linux was submitted. On March 31, 1992, the newsgroup was renamed Comp.Oz.Linux. The fact that Linux is a monolithic kernel rather than a microkernel was the topic of a debate between Andrew West Tannenbaum, the creator of Minix, and Torvalds. The Tannenbaum-Torvalds debate started in 1992 on the Usenet group comp.os.minix as a general discussion about kernel architectures. Linux version 0.95 was the first to be capable of running the X window system. In March 1994, Linux 1.0.0 was released with 176,250 lines of code. It was the first version suitable for use in production environments. It started a versioning system for the kernel with three or four numbers separated by dots where the first represented the major release, the second was the minor release, and the third was the revision. At that time odd-numbered minor releases were for development and tests whilst even-numbered minor releases were for production. The optional fourth digit indicated a set of patches to a revision. Development releases were indicated with RC, release candidate, suffix. After version 1.3 of the kernel, Torvalds decided that Linux had evolved enough to warrant a new major number, 
so he released version 2.0.0 in June 1996. The series included 41 releases. The major feature of 2.0 was support for symmetric multiprocessing and support for more types of processors. Linux used to be maintained without the help of an automated source code management system until, in 2002, development switched to BitKeeper. It was freely available for Linux developers but it was not free software. In 2005, because of efforts to reverse engineer it, the company which owned the software revoked the support of the Linux community. In response, Torvalds and others wrote Git. The new system was written within weeks, and in two months the first official kernel made using it was released. The 20th anniversary of Linux was celebrated by Torvalds in July 2011 with the release of the 3.0.0 kernel version. Torvalds announced that the big change was nothing. Absolutely nothing. And asked, let's make sure we really make the next release not just an all new shiny number, but a good kernel too. On December 11, 2012, Torvalds decided to reduce kernel complexity by removing support for i386 processors, making the 3.7 kernel series the last one still supporting the original processor. The same series unified support for the ARM processor. Ebury 2015. In April 2015, Torvalds released kernel version 4.0. By February 2015, Linux had received contributions from nearly 12,000 programmers from more than 1,200 companies, including some of the world's largest software and hardware vendors. Version 4.1 of Linux, released in June 2015, contains over 19.5 million lines of code. Most websites run on Linux-based operating systems and all of the world's 500 most powerful supercomputers use some kind of OS based on Linux. Linux distributions bundle the kernel with system software and a wide selection of application software, but their usage share in desktops is low in comparison to other operating systems. Android, which accounts for the majority of the installed base of all operating systems for mobile devices, is responsible for the rising usage of the Linux kernel, together with its wide use in a large variety of embedded devices. Linux is a monolithic kernel with a modular design, supporting most features once only available in closed source kernels of non free operating systems. The numbers that follow the name of commands, interfaces, and other features have the purpose of specifying the section they belong to. Most device drivers and kernel extensions run in kernel space with full access to the hardware. Some exceptions run in user space the X window system and Wayland, the windowing system and display server protocols that most people use with Linux, do not run within the kernel. Differently, the actual interfacing with GPUs of graphics cards is an in-kernel subsystem called Direct Rendering Manager. Unlike standard monolithic kernels, device drivers are easily configured as modules and loaded or unloaded while the system is running and can also be preempted under certain conditions in order to handle hardware interrupts correctly and to better support symmetric multiprocessing. By choice, Linux has no stable device driver application binary interface. Linux typically makes use of memory protection and virtual memory and can also handle non-uniform memory access. However the project has absorbed MuClinux which also makes it possible to run Linux on microcontrollers without virtual memory. The hardware is represented in the file hierarchy. User applications interact with device drivers via entries in the dev or sys directories. Processes information as well are mapped to the file system through the proc directory. Linux is a clone of Unix, and aims towards POSIX and single Unix specification compliance. The kernel also provides system calls and other interfaces that are Linux specific. In order to be included in the official kernel, the code must comply with a set of licensing rules. The Linux application binary interface between the kernel and the user space has four degrees of stability, however, the system calls are expected to never change in order to not break the user space programs that rely on them. There is also no guarantee of stability of source level in kernel and, because of this, device driver's code, as well as the code of any other kernel subsystem, must be kept updated with kernel evolution.
Any developer who makes a change is required to fix any code that breaks as the result of their change. Memory management in Linux is a complex topic. First of all, the kernel is not patchable. In the kernel there is no memory protection, therefore memory violations lead to instability and system crashes. Linux implements virtual memory with 4 and 5 levels page tables. As said, only user memory space is always pageable. It maintains information about each page frame of RAM and apposite data structures that are populated immediately after boots and that are kept until shutdown, regardless of them being or not associated with virtual pages. Furthermore, it classifies all page frames in zones according to their architecture-dependent constraints and intended use. While not originally designed to be portable, Linux is now one of the most widely ported operating system kernels, running on a diverse range of systems from the ARM architecture to IBM Z architecture mainframe computers. The first port was performed on the Motorola 68000 platform. The modifications to the kernel were so fundamental that Torvalds viewed the Motorola version as a fork and a Linux-like operating system. However, that moved Torvalds to lead a major restructure of the code to facilitate porting to more computing architectures. The first Linux that, in a single source tree, had code for more than i386 alone, supported the DEC Alpha AXP 64-bit platform. Linux runs as the main operating system on IBM Summit. As of October 2019, all of the world's 500 fastest supercomputers run some operating system based on the Linux kernel, a big change from 1998 when the first Linux supercomputer got added to the list. Linux has also been ported to various handheld devices such as Apple's iPhone 3G and iPod. In 2007, the LKDB project has been started to build a comprehensive database of hardware and protocols known by Linux kernels. The database is built automatically by static analysis of the kernel sources. Later in 2014, the Linux hardware project was launched to automatically collect a database of all tested hardware configurations with the help of users of various Linux distributions. Rebootless updates can even be applied to the kernel by using live patching technologies such as Xplis, Kvitch, and Kgraft. Minimalistic foundations for live kernel patching were merged into the Linux kernel mainline and kernel version 4.0, which was released on April 12, 2015. Those foundations, known as Live Patch and based primarily on the kernel's trace functionality, form a common core capable of supporting hot patching by both KGraft and Kvitch, by providing an application programming interface for kernel modules that contain hot patches and an application binary interface for the user space management utilities. However, the common core included into Linux kernel 4.0 supports only the x86 architecture and does not provide any mechanisms for ensuring function level consistency while the hot patches are applied. As of April 2015, there is ongoing work on porting Kvitch and KGraph to the common live patching core provided by the Linux kernel mainline. Kernel bugs present potential security issues. For example, they may allow for privilege escalation or create denial of service attack vectors. Over the years, numerous bugs affecting system security were found and fixed. New features are frequently implemented to improve the kernel's security. Capabilities have already been introduced in the section about the processes and threads. Android makes use of them and system gives administrators detailed control over the capabilities of processes. Linux offers a wealth of mechanisms to reduce kernel attack surface and improve security which are collectively known as the Linux security modules. They comprise the security enhanced Linux module, whose code has been originally developed and then released to the public by the NSA, and AppArmor among others. Critics have accused kernel developers of covering up security flaws, or at least not announcing them, in 2008. Linus Torvalds responded to this by saying I personally consider security bugs to be just normal bugs. I don't cover them up, but I also don't have any reason whatsoever to think it's a good idea to track them and announce them as something special. One reason I refuse to bother with the whole security circus is that I think it glorifies and thus encourages the wrong behavior. It makes heroes out of security people, as if the people who don't just fix normal bugs aren't as important. In fact, all the boring normal bugs are way more important, just because there's a lot more of them, 
I don't think some spectacular security hole should be glorified or cared about as being any more special than a random spectacular crash due to bad locking. End of quote. Linux distributions typically release security updates to fix vulnerabilities in the Linux kernel. Many offer long-term support releases that receive security updates for a certain Linux kernel version for an extended period of time. The community of Linux kernel developers comprises about 5,000 to 6,000 members. According to the 2017 State of Linux Kernel Development, a study issued by the Linux Foundation, covering the commits for the releases 4.8 to 4.23, about 1,500 developers were contributing from about 200 to 250 companies on average. The top 30 developers contributed a little more than 16% of the code. In 2005 Andrew Morton said of the development, instead of a roadmap, there are technical guidelines. Instead of a central resource allocation, there are persons and companies who all have a stake in the further development of the Linux kernel, quite independently from one another, people like Linus Torvalds and I don't plan the kernel evolution. We don't sit there and think up the roadmap for the next two years, then assign resources to the various new features. That's because we don't have any resources. The resources are all owned by the various corporations who use and contribute to Linux, as well as by the various independent contributors out there. It's those people who own the resources who decide. End of quote. As with many large open source software projects, developers are required to adhere to the Contributor Covenant, a code of conduct intended to address harassment of minority contributors. Additionally, to prevent offense the use of inclusive terminology within the source code is mandated. The Linux development community uses Git to manage the source code. Git users clone the latest version of Torvalds 3 with Git clone and keep it up to date using Git pool. Contributions are submitted as patches, in the form of text messages on the LKML. The patches must conform to a set of rules and to a formal language that, among other things, describes which lines of code are to be deleted and what others are to be added to the specified files. These patches can be automatically processed so that system administrators can apply them in order to make just some changes to the code or to incrementally upgrade to the next version. A developer who wants to change the Linux kernel starts with developing and testing that change. Depending on how significant the change is and how many subsystems it modifies, the change will either be submitted as a single patch or in multiple patches of source code. In case of a single subsystem that is maintained by a single maintainer, these patches are sent as emails to the maintainer of the subsystem with the appropriate mailing list in CC. The maintainer and the readers of the mailing list will review the patches and provide feedback. Once the review process has finished the subsystem maintainer accepts the patches in the relevant Git kernel tree. If the changes to the Linux kernel are bug fixes that are considered important enough, a pull request for the patches will be sent to Torvalds within a few days. Otherwise, a pull request will be sent to Torvalds during the next merge window. The merge window usually lasts two weeks and starts immediately after the release of the previous kernel version. Linux is written in a special C programming language supported by GCC, a compiler that extends in many ways the C standard, for example using inline sections of code written in the assembly language of the target architecture. Since 2002 all the code must adhere to the 21 rules comprising the Linux kernel coding style. Bugs involving the Linux kernel can be difficult to troubleshoot. This is because of the kernel's interaction with user space and hardware, and also because they might be caused from a wider range of reasons compared to those of user programs. A few examples of the underlying causes are semantic errors in code, misuse of synchronization primitives, and incorrect hardware management. A report of a non-fatal bug in the kernel is called an oops. Such deviations from correct behavior of the Linux kernel may allow continued operation with compromised reliability. A critical and fatal error is reported via the panic function. It prints a message and then halts the kernel. One of the most common techniques used to find out bugs in code is debugging by printing. Another fundamental technique for debugging a running kernel is tracing. Developers who feel treated unfairly can report this to the Linux Foundation's Technical Advisory Board. 
In July 2013, the maintainer of the USB 3.0 driver Sage Sharp asked Torvalds to address the abusive commentary in the kernel development community. In 2014, Sharp backed out of Linux kernel development, saying that the focus on technical excellence, in combination with overloaded maintainers, and people with different cultural and social norms, means that Linux kernel maintainers are often blunt, rude, or brutal to get their job done. At the Linux.ho conference in 2018, developers expressed the view that the culture of the community has gotten much better in the past few years. Daniel Vetter, the maintainer of the Intel graphics kernel driver, commented that the rather violent language and discussion in the kernel community has decreased or disappeared. The Git tree of Linus Torvalds that contains the Linux kernel is referred to as mainline Linux. Every stable kernel release originates from the mainline tree, and is frequently published on kernel.org. Mainline Linux has only solid support for a small subset of the many devices that run Linux. Non-mainline support is provided by independent projects, such as Yocto or Linro, but in many cases the kernel from the device vendor is needed. Using a vendor kernel likely requires a board support package. Maintaining a kernel tree outside of mainline Linux has proven to be difficult. The maintainer of the stable branch, Greg Croa Hartman, has applied the term Linux-like to downstream kernel forks by vendors that add millions of lines of code to the mainline kernel. In 2019, Google stated that they wanted to use the mainline Linux kernel in Android so the number of kernel forks would be reduced. The term Linux-like has also been applied to the embeddable Linux kernel subset, which does not include the full mainline Linux kernel but a small modified subset of the code. There are certain communities that develop kernels based on the official Linux. In 2010, the Linux community criticized Google for effectively starting its own kernel tree. This means that any drivers written for Android hardware platforms, cannot get merged into the main kernel tree because they have dependencies on code that only lives in Google's kernel tree, causing it to fail to build in the kernel.org tree. Because of this, Google has now prevented a large chunk of hardware drivers and platform code from ever getting merged into the main kernel tree. Effectively creating a kernel branch that a number of different vendors are now relying on. Today Android uses a slightly customized Linux where changes are implemented in device drivers so that little or no change to the core kernel code is required. Android developers also submit patches to the official Linux that finally can boot the Android operating system. For example, a Nexus 7 can boot and run the mainline Linux. In April 2021, a team from the University of Minnesota was found to be submitting bad faith patches to the kernel as part of their research. This resulted in the immediate reversion of all patches ever submitted by a member of the university. In addition, a warning was issued by a senior maintainer that any future patch from the university would be rejected on site. Prominent Linux kernel developers have been aware of the importance of avoiding conflicts between developers. For a long time there was no code of conduct for kernel developers due to opposition by Linus or Vaults. However, a Linux kernel code of conflict was introduced on March 8, 2015. It was replaced on September 16, 2018 by a new code of conduct based on the Contributor Covenant. This coincided with a public apology by Torvalds and a brief break from kernel development. As of 2021, the 5.11 release of the Linux kernel had around 30.34 million lines of code. Roughly 14% of the code is part of the core while 60% is driver. The cost to redevelop the Linux kernel as of September 26, 2018, using then current over 20 million lines of code for the April 14, 2014 Linux kernel and the current U.S. national average programmer salary of $75,506 show it would cost approximately $14,725,449,000. To rewrite the existing code, the latest kernel version and older kernel versions are maintained separately. Most latest kernel releases were supervised by Linus or Vaults. Current versions are released by Greg Croa Hartman. The Linux kernel developer community maintains a stable kernel by applying fixes for software bugs that have been discovered during the development of a subsequent stable kernel. Therefore, www.kernel.org will always list two stable kernels.
The next stable Linux kernel is now released only 8 to 12 weeks later. Most Linux users run a kernel supplied by their Linux distribution. Some distributions ship the vanilla or stable kernels. However, several Linux distribution vendors maintain another set of Linux kernel branches which are integrated into their products. These are usually updated at a slower pace compared to the vanilla branch, and they usually include all fixes from the relevant stable branch, but at the same time they can also add support for drivers or features which had not been released in the vanilla version the distribution vendor started basing their branch from. Initially, Torvalds released Linux under a license which forbade any commercial use. This was changed in version 0.12 by a switch to the GNU General Public License version 2. This license allows distribution and sell of possibly modified and unmodified versions of Linux but requires that all those copies be released under the same license and be accompanied by, or that, on request, free access is given to, the complete corresponding source code. Torvalds has described licensing Linux under the GPL v2 as the best thing he ever did. Linux is a registered trademark of Linus Torvalds in the United States, the European Union, and some other countries. A legal battle over the trademark began in 1996, when William Della Croce, a lawyer who was never involved in the development of Linux, started requesting licensing fees for the use of the word Linux. After it was proven that the word was in common use long before Della Croce's claimed first use, the trademark was awarded to Torvalds.